to Volunteers America Chesapeake, our church without walls, and friends and family members and, and those that are visiting with us, thank you for being here today. Um, we're excited for the message by Reverend Donaldson, and we welcome you and welcome you to our family as well as welcome you here today, and we're looking forward to your message. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. I'd like to have uh, Reverend Jim Sense um, lead us in the opening prayer. Morning. Morning. Please let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you today to worship together, to pray together, and to celebrate Easter together. As always, Lord, we thank you for all the precious gifts that you've bestowed upon us, especially your precious gift of life and your precious gift of afterlife. Lord, we thank you for our families, our friends, and our co-workers. And we thank you for this opportunity to come together today. We also thank you for the opportunity we have every day as VLA members and staff to help others in need every single day. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Take me to the King. You see, I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces, but it's my offering. The truth is I'm tired, but options are few. I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out, hurt, and abused. I can't fake what's left to do. The truth is I'm weak with no strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I tried. But still my soul refuses to die. One touch will change my life. Truth is, it's time to stop playing these games because we need a word for the people's pain. So Lord, speak right now let it pour like rain. We're desperate. We're chasing after you with no rules, no religion. I've made my decision to run to you, the healer that I need. Lord, we're in the way. We keep making mistakes. The glory is not for us. It's all for you. So take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart, my heart is torn to pieces, <coughs> but it's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. Truth 
Scripture today is taken from John 14, verse 19, and Acts 1, verse 3. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks. I have the honor and the privilege um, to introduce Reverend Donaldson, um, but I'll, I'll do it in a couple different ways. We have two new family members here, Valencia, who operates and is our program director over our, our substance abuse programs over in Arlington, Virginia. We're so blessed to have you, and you do incredible work. So thank you for being part of our family, and Eric, wonderful to have you here, and I've met your, your kids, and it's great, great to have you, but just a, we have a very accomplished um, pastor, a, a member of, of the cloth, one of our, our brothers in Christ here today, and I'm very anxious to, to hear your message that you will be uh, giving us and the words that God will put in your mouth. Um, but let me start by saying, Reverend Donaldson, is, as you can tell, his wife's here, is very happily married. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's two, they have two kids, Deja and Devon, yes. and they are keeping them busy, but uh, they're ages 12 and 10. But, you know, that's just a, a reflection of the support of the wife. The spouse is giving your husband, and it's just very blessed to have you both here today. But he has previously licensed and ordained in two other organizations. He is now licensed as an ordained Unity Minister through Unity Worldwide Ministries, headquartered in Unity Village, Missouri. He is currently the seventh spiritual leader in the 63-year history of Unity Christian Church of Memphis, Tennessee. Let me now go on to some of his accomplishments. Um, Reverend Donaldson has received many awards as a result of his commitment to healthy communities. 
his work in recovery and with ex-offenders. He's part of our family, isn't he? <laughs> he has been invited to the White House on two occasions, has received the key to two cities, and is on the Board of Preachers of the Distinguished Moorhead College. The governor of the state of Tex uh, Tennessee declared back in December of 2014, Reverend Eric Ovid Donaldson's day for his public speaking and ministerial accomplishments while in Kuala Lumpur, uh, Malaysia, where he overcame over 30,000 contestants worldwide to become one of nine finalists in Toastmasters International's 2014 World Championship of Public Speaking. We're blessed to have you here. Good afternoon, VOA. Good afternoon. So good to see you. So good being with you today. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. This is a very special moment for me because I get an opportunity to share with you what spirit is bringing to me, but it's also an opportunity for me to speak to those that are dedicating their lives to service. You minister to so many people. It's so important that you're ministered to as well. Amen. It's also important to me that I get an opportunity to worship with my wife, Valencia. Amen. And thank you for receiving her so warmly. That reaches me. You are gifted. Amen. Amen. Give a round of applause and praise God for Daryl Shaw. Another round of applause for the many ministers that are here with us today. Thank you. And for the worship planning team, let's, let's hear it for them as well. I thank you so much for inviting me here to share some thoughts around this wonderful subject and this wonderful experience of worship and celebration. It's my prayer. That what is shared today brings new insight and inspiration to what you do, to what you're called to do in the world that you're encouraged, that you're lifted, that you are given strength, and abundantly so. That whatever is lacking is strengthened in you. Whatever anxieties or concerns you have fall away. That we go out into the world back to our calling, back to our work, back to our home, back to our families, with renewed enthusiasm and strength for what's possible in the world. Amen. Heaven on earth. Amen. At first glance of this scripture that kept coming back to me, Acts Chapter 1, verse 3. It seems to be an unusual selection for this period, especially since we're concentrating on Easter. However, under close scrutiny, we see that there's much to be gleaned here. It speaks of Jesus' sacrifice after his suffering, it says. This scripture tells us of his victory over death, being seen alive following the crucifixion and his entombment. It tells us of the period of time in which he appeared following his resurrection, 40 days, which has significance for those who celebrate the 40 days of the Lenten season. You know, we, we often 
concentrate on the 40 days of Jesus and his wilderness experience and emulate that through sacrifices. But we never consider the 40 days following his triumphant resurrection and to the best of our ability, emulate that as well. The scripture also tells us that he had, to, had something to say following such a life-altering event. It says that he talked and teached about the kingdom of God. Overall, the book of Acts acts as a transition from the acts of Jesus to the acts of his disciples, and more specifically, the apostles. Now, you might not have gotten that, so let me say that one more time. <laughs> the book of Acts also acts as a transition from the acts of Jesus to the acts of his disciples. You get that? Okay. And more specifically, the apostles. Stick a pen there for a moment. We're going to get back to that. The title of my talk today is Because He Lives. And if that sounds familiar to you, it's because you may be familiar with the Southern Gospel hymn of the same name. It's an Easter favorite world over. Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote the song. And it goes a little something like this. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Oh, you know the song? <laughs> because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. I love Easter. <laughs> I love that song. I love everything there is about Easter. I remember growing up as a kid, getting dressed. I got new clothes for Easter. I got a haircut for Easter. I got new shoes for Easter. They never were the shoes I wanted. It was always the shoes my mom picked. But I got new shoes nonetheless. It was one of those times, and I, I went to church, and then all of a sudden, you know, I see the people, and everybody got something new going on. And it was just an exciting time. Have you ever had that experience? Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, I love Easter, and I love the Easter story. I remember my mom telling me that story as a child. My mom read many stories to me when I was a child. Some of them from the Bible, like the Easter story, and some were fables, some were fairy tales, some were about our family. And I remember getting caught up in the stories. In my mind, I would take on the role of the hero, and I would relate to the problem presented in the story. And then I could also feel the challenge of the antagonist. And like the hero, I tried to figure out how to overcome whatever I needed to face. Anybody had an imagination like that when you were growing up? I mean, you just put yourself right inside the story. And at times, I could have sworn that those stories were about me, or at least an element or an aspect of who I am, or what I may encounter in life and how to deal with it. That includes the Easter story. I remember asking my mom, Mom, is that story true? Did that really happen? And she would always answer that question with another question. Mom was wise. She said, son, what do you think? Hmm. You see, she knew how to keep those questions surrounding the facts and accuracy from diminishing the value of the message. In other words, she was saying, that's not the point. What's the message to you? If you can get the message, then you got the point. Mm -hmm. And that kept my imagination engaged on what was possible for me. I could always defeat the giant. 
I could always slay the dragon. I could do that without getting burnt to a crisp. I could make the right choices. I could address and resolve conflict. I could live happily ever after. Years later, here I am, dealing with my realities of life. And as good as my life has been, thank God, there are moments when I wondered, what did I get myself into? Oh. Or how in the world did I get here? Or am I going to make it? Will I make it through this? My life has not been without those moments of difficulty, disappointment, pain. <clears throat> I still have problems. But I opened this book called the Holy Scriptures, the Holy Bible. And I began to read the Gospels. And just as I did back then, with the stories told to me during my childhood, and with all the hopes and the dreams of a child, I began to see myself again through the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, he stops being this exceptionally inaccessible, unapproachable, sacrificial figure up on a cross 2,000 years ago, and he becomes an example, mm -hmm. a standard, yes. an ideal, a teacher, a comforter, mm -hmm. a counselor. A present help. Yes. I take on the role of disciple. And I learn to pray and meditate and connect. And I learn to sacrifice my temptations, my bad attitudes, my appetites. Perhaps you've done similar things through the practice of the 40 days of Lent or by commemorating the stations of the cross. The light of the world that shines in Jesus begins to shine in me. Amen. And then suddenly, remarkably, I see light at the end of my tunnels. Mm -hmm. yes. I can see my way through again. I can see my way through my problems. And I grow from them, too. Yes. You know, it's important to not just go through things, yes. but to grow through things. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And all that because the path has been illumined. Mm -hmm. I can see the light. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, I've been able to make it through. I've come this far Praise by faith. Amen. We can follow Jesus, as he suggests, when he says in Matthew 16, 24, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And as a result, we have an opportunity to cross out all of our hindrances, roll away the stone and stumbling blocks, Remove ourselves from whatever might otherwise entomb us. Mm -hmm. And not just resurrect, mm -hmm. but to cross over into new life, mm -hmm. new hope, mm -hmm. another opportunity, yes. another chance. Mm -hmm. And not just the chance, but more abundantly so. Mm -hmm. Not just life, but life abundantly. Acts chapter 1 verse 3 tells us that after Jesus sacrificed and suffered, he presented himself alive and convincingly so, appearing to them for 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. 
Spirit gave me this unusual scripture to share with you today in order to help us all move past the rote lamenting of Jesus' suffering mm -hmm. and bring us into the joy of what happens next. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus didn't stay on the cross. Ooh, should I say that? It's true. He didn't stay on the cross, and neither should we. Crossed about how life is treating us unfairly. Mad because someone crossed you. Hello. Jesus forgave those who crossed him for they did not know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And we should be forgiving also. Amen. Don't let unforgiveness keep you from your next station in life. Mm -hmm. All this good in life that God has in store for us, mm -hmm. and we're stuck on being crossed? <laughs> Get off of it. The cross, that is. <laughs> God has better things in store for you, yes. for all of us. Amen. Jesus didn't stay in the tomb either. Yes. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how grave your circumstances may seem, you don't have to remain buried or burdened by them. Amen. Follow Jesus and roll that rock away. Learn how to turn your stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Listen, Jesus didn't just resurrect for resurrection's sake. Yeah. Yeah. This wasn't a magic trip, a trick, abracadabra. No, this wasn't for entertainment purposes alone. He overcame death and forever changed what we see death as being. Yes. Mm. Amen. Through his resurrection, Jesus as the Son of Man affirms us as spiritual beings, that is, sons and daughters of God, mm -hmm. having human experiences. Mm -hmm. We are spiritual beings having human experiences. Not just human beings mm -hmm. having the occasional spiritual That's experience. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus flipped the script on us, which allows us to see ourselves as eternal beings in the making. That is, souls with bodies rather than bodies with souls. And as a result, we are now able to choose eternal life through Christ rather than death by default. Jesus didn't stay on the cross. Jesus didn't stay in the tomb. Jesus didn't just resurrect. Jesus presented himself alive and proved that the kingdom of God was indeed at hand. He showed us that the kingdom of God is a now thing and not in the by and by. Now, if you want to wait for the by and by, you can. That's your choice. But you don't have to. It's here now, my friends. Luke 17, 20 and 21 says the kingdom of God does not come with observation. So what are you looking for? What are you waiting on? It's right here. It's right now. It's in the midst of us. It's in the midst of you. It emerges within you or in the midst of you. It comes out of your overcoming. It comes through the earth of your experience. It comes through you, dear souls. This is what Jesus taught. And he continued to speak about it for 40 days. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let me put that this way. Let the earth of your experience reflect the heavens in your soul. Mm -hmm. 
By disciplining and dedicating yourself to the follow to following the Christ in your into your own personal resurrection. That's what's up for us. That's what's so special about this. We have the opportunity to have kind of a mini resurrection. You, you may not go through what Jesus go through, but whatever you're going through right now, wouldn't it be great if you experience a good Friday in that context? Where all of your cares, concerns, worries, anxieties are mortally wounded and fall away. What if, what if as it pertains to what's up for you right now, what's entombing you, what has you bound, what has you chained, suddenly falls away? What if that rock rolled away in this moment? And what if what was holding you down for so long, what you thought you could never get over, what you thought could never happen for you, suddenly rises up and happens? <sighs> A personal resurrection where the Christ in you expresses through you and as you. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Wow. Can you envision? Can you imagine? Can you be a child once again and put yourself in that role? Hmm. I said we would come back to Acts. Remember what I mentioned earlier about the books of Acts? Don't worry. Let me refresh your memory. Repeat after me. The book of Acts. Also Acts. Also acts as, a as a transition from the acts of Jesus, from the acts of Jesus to, the acts of to the acts of his disciples. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, if you follow Jesus, if you, follow Jesus you, are a modern day disciple. you are a modern day disciple. And this brings us to our title, the title of my talk, and the conclusion of my message today. Today's title, Because He Lives, speaks to the present moment. It doesn't say because he lived. Right. It says because he, he lives. That title also speaks to what results from previous events or occurrences. That because, if that's, there's, a, there's an effect that's waiting in the wings when you put that because there. There's a cause and an effect. Because he lives, Dot, dot, dot. So within that statement, within that phrase, within that title, there is a question. A question to be answered by each one of us. What am I able to have in my life or do in my life or be in my life? because he lives. Amen. Only you can answer that question, and you can answer it only for yourself. But if you're willing to follow Jesus, to learn from his teachings, to live by his example, and to live a life that is Christ-like, you will know what it means when Jesus says, because I live, you also will live. You'll know what it means when he says, he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him or her. You'll know what it means when we sing the song and say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. Because he lives, all fear, is gone Amen. because I know that he holds the future yeah. and life is worth the living yeah. 
because he lives. He lives. Yes. Yes. Let the church say. Amen. Well, it's that time again. We must leave you, but you're in our hearts and in our prayers. And we're so delighted that you were able to join with us today for this wonderful message by Amen. Reverend Donaldson. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and because he lives, the question still is, what does that mean to you personally? Does it provide you an opportunity to reflect on your personal resurrection? Does it give you new life, new hope, new joy that he always brings yes. simply because he lives? Amen. And because he lives, not only we too shall live, but we have eternal life. Yes. So we want you to sit back, relax, and reflect on the message you've heard today as we depart. But we leave you with an abundance of light and love to support you on this journey simply because he lives. Yes.